Okay, I want to make another video, and in this video I want to demonstrate how to get back to Earth from the moon. And to do that, I'm going to use the Brighton Beach scenario located in the Delta Glider folder. That way, if you like, you can follow along. Before I get into that, I just want to briefly explain what it is that I'm going to do because this method is terrible but I just want to explain why this works at least try to explain it in the middle of this graphic that I made it's a very crude graphic we've got the earth and this ring around the earth is intended to be the uh, orbital path of the moon around the earth and this little circle here in the center is intended to represent the moon itself and finally this ring around the moon is intended to represent the moon's gravitational field this would be its sphere of influence its SOI in order to get back to the earth the interesting thing is that all we really have to do is break out of the moon's SOI we have to get out of its sphere of influence as long as we get outside of the moon's sphere of influence then getting back to earth simply becomes a matter of adjusting our periapsis and our apoapsis because the moon or excuse me the earth's sphere of influence is way out here it's much larger so it really doesn't matter how we get away from the moon we could go this direction we could go this direction and we could even go this direction it doesn't matter how we get away from the moon as long as we get away from it as long as we break away from that sphere of influence so we could end up on some really awkward orbit that's got us going like this or you know like that or whatever it doesn't matter as long as we're out of the sphere of influence so that's what I want to demonstrate here so again I'm going to go to the Delta Glider folder, choose the Brighton Beach scenario, and hit Launch Orbiter. Once Orbiter comes up, I'm just going to take off and get back to Earth with no planning. So let me just hit F1 to jump right in to the cockpit view. And I'm not even really going to use any instrumentation other than the orbit MFD just so I can know what my uh, you know what what my time to apoapsis is and that type of thing but other than that I'm not going to use any instrumentation so I can just shut that side off so without any further ado and without regards to what my heading is I don't care what my heading is in fact I could lift off and rotate to some random heading it doesn't matter I'm just gonna go so I'm gonna hover up off the moon track landing gear and in fact I will shut off this so I don't even know where I'm going and I'm just gonna rotate to some random direction I don't care that works for me I'm pointing this direction I don't know what direction that is flying main engines and now I just need to get up to a velocity of a little over 1600 meters a second will get me up to the orbital velocity for the moon but then I need to go beyond that to break out of the moon's sphere of influence this is not efficient obviously this is not a good way to get back to the Earth, but I just wanted to demonstrate, you know, the basic principle here. Turn off my hover engines, I forgot I had them on. And at this point all I'm doing is keeping a little bit of an eye on my time to apoapsis I don't want to get into some too 
into some really steep orbit around the moon, but that shouldn't be a problem, because all I'm going to do is just continue burning straight ahead until my eccentricity is greater than one. Because once it's greater than one, it means I have, you know, a non-orbit. It means I've broken out of the moons. Uh, I, have a, I have a velocity that's high enough to get me away from the moon's gravitational influence. And of course, the eccentricity will go lower here for a while while I'm establishing an orbit, and then it'll go, and then it'll climb back up again. In fact, I can probably get away with a little bit of time warp. Let me just pitch down a little bit here first. I can't, I don't remember if I got an autopilot on or not. Let me check something here. Yeah, I've still got that autopilot on. Let me turn that off. There we go. And I warp time ahead a little bit to break out. And there I am. Okay, now that I've broken away from the moon's gravitational effects here, or at least I have a velocity that will get me out of that. I'm just going to warp time ahead until the gravitational influence of the moon is down to basically nothing. Okay, that's good enough for that. Now let me reference the Earth. And you can see that I have this very elliptical orbit around the Earth. And basically, if you understand the very basics of orbital mechanics, then you should very easily be able to realize how to get back to Earth at this point. All I have to do is lower my periapsis down so that I'm reasonably close to the Earth. So let's just briefly demonstrate that. My time to apoapsis is 301,000 seconds. So let me just warp ahead to apoapsis. Getting close. Oops, I almost overshot. Now I can't use the Prograde, uh, retrograde stuff because for whatever reason when you're this far away from the earth I'm assuming because this isn't green then you actually have to use rotation and do it by hand luckily it's right here what would happen if I clicked prograde would be that the autopilot would put me in the prograde position based on my orbit around the sun. So, and I don't want that. I want to be in, um, actually I want to be retrograde, not prograde. There's the earth. But as I was saying, being this far out, it would put me into the prograde or retrograde position based on my orbit around the sun, not based on my orbit around the Earth. So what I've done was in bringing up the orbit HUD, then I click HUD over here, the HUD button, and that brings up my HUD so that I can see what my prograde and retrograde orientations are supposed to be. So now that I'm oriented to the correct direction, let me warp time ahead get closer to apoapsis. It's probably getting close enough. And let's just fire engines and bring down periapsis.
obviously looking for a periapsis somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, actually I probably shouldn't go lower than something like this because I don't know exactly what's going to happen as I continue getting closer to the earth most when you're this far out obviously if I had a periapsis of 200 kilometers that's not going to hold all the way that's not going to hold all the way until I get to earth so I'm going to leave it a little on the high side and I'll make a final adjustment once I get closer so let me warp time ahead looks like it's continuing to climb so a periapsis of like negative 200 might have been good but I'll fix this later on getting into the earth's oh my gosh I used so much time warpage I skipped around or I went around that's okay I will just continue to go back out to apoapsis and come back around and just pretend that didn't happen Okay, so pretending that I didn't accidentally go around one time, back in this position, what I would do here would be, since I'm now close enough to the Earth to be in the correct uh, gravitational field, if I wanted to, I can start using prograde and auto, uh, prograde and retrograde autopilots. Now, to make an adjustment to your periapsis here, you don't actually want to use uh, prograde and retrograde burns. What you want to do are inward and outward burns. So if I wanted to bring down my periapsis a little bit, at this point, I would rotate this direction, would be negative 90 degrees from the direction of, you know, movement. And with just very small amounts of translation thrust, I would be able to bring down my periapsis. So let's get a target of 200 kilometers. Use a little bit of main engine. I'll leave it a little on the high side. Just in case it continues to change as I get closer. And now, warp ahead to periapsis. And you're back home. Now just do a normal retrograde burn. Gonna start retrograde burn here in a second. And there you have it, that gets you from the moon all the way back to the earth without any kind of navigation or anything at all. Again, it's a horrible method, but it just kind of makes the point that, you know, getting back to the earth from the moon doesn't require any sophisticated navigation. It's just if you understand the orbital elements, that's far more important. So in another video, I'm going to uh, show how to do it more elegantly using transects.